How many of you wake up every day and see an array of smog or have experienced more floodings in your hometowns or districts? If so, I'm going to be speaking about the climate crisis and how it is affecting the country we all reside in, Vietnam. As being one of the countries with the longest coastline, Vietnam faces significant challenges on this issue. Time is ticking, and the longer we wait to take action, the more problems there will be. The government has been implementing green agendas for the future. However, I strongly believe the strength of the action lies within you, the people. Just over a year ago, Vietnam suffered its worst flooding disaster yet, which claimed over 150 lives. The flooding stretched from the central city of Da Nang to some of the south central provinces. Da Nang is used to facing these climactic events. But the fact that it will still go on will not only weaken the economic value of the city, but the cultural and environmental aspects as well. Last year, when Storm Konsun hit, people had to navigate their way through filthy waterways just to get to their homes or job sites. I strongly relate to this as I've been to a school in Tao Dien, Saigon, where it used to flood almost daily. After witnessing how some of my friends, teachers, and administrators struggled to come to school, I started to advocate for the climate crisis. Those who stood by me were the members of the Sustainability Committee, who encouraged me on Earth Day 2019 to give a speech highlighting the effects and solutions of the crisis. There were students who didn't know or didn't care about the crisis, but I was there to show how the climate crisis was linked to their lives. Towards the north, researchers from the University of Engineering and Technology said that the capital had the worst air quality in the country. This is an even greater cause for concern, as human health is also affected along with the risk of the climate crisis. In terms of the pandemic, there will be more cases added as the virus feeds on those who are most vulnerable. According to the president of the Vietnam Clean Air Partnership, more than 40% of northern Vietnamese localities have air pollutants higher than the national standard. However, when lockdowns came around, the, there were more clean, the air was much cleaner than before and it was so much better as people were starting to walk more and take out their bicycles and go to their respective destinations. According to a UN report, more than 40% of harmful greenhouse gas emissions were reduced. And this became true in a lot of ways through the lockdowns that were implemented around the region. Towards the south, the country is suffering from a drought unlike any other, as it's become more severe throughout the years. This is because the rainy season is coming at a much later date and, and it's starting to become much shorter. This is causing more food shortages and water scarcity for the people around the Mekong Delta region. As I've been living here for more than a decade now, I started to become a vegetarian through realizing all the effects of the droughts that are happening around not only the Mekong Delta region, but other regions as well. Being a vegetarian means saving up more water compared to meat-based products, as vegetables require less water and they are much more distributable. I remember once going on a trip to Katia National Park and seeing these incredible species such as the silver, silver langur or the pygmy loris that are currently under threat by our inactions on this issue. Their homes are currently under threat by the construction of palm oil factories or deforestation that's happening. Their populations are declining steadily year by year. It's similar to how we have to constantly flee our homes whenever there's any internal conflict or war. We all want to safeguard our homes and fill them with joy. And we all want to ensure that everyone can live safely. 
Therefore, let's do our part to save the animals that are currently under threat around the forest, not only in Captain Park, but other national forests as well. We can do this by starting out reforestation initiatives or going on ecotourism visits, as the one I've done here, so that more animals can be protected and they can have their survival alongside us as well. We have now got to step up and step in with our game. I remember once being part of the sustainability club at my school. We learned the importance of doing eco bricking and carrying our own bags to the grocery store to limit plastic pollution. We went on a farm with it to donate our eco bricking bottles in which we can have a plastic bottle and insert any plastic materials into them so that more homes can be created. I started to get involved in the club after seeing the documentary called Plastic Paradise, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Plastic pollution has become very common as we can see more plastics around the beaches, streets, or other public areas. The link between the plastic pollution and climate change, climate change is that as soon as plastic turn into microplastics, more greenhouse gas emissions are released into the atmosphere. I, as I've been starting to spread awareness about this on my social media and organizations I partner with, such as the Local Globe, Dear Asian Youth, and at my school, I start to write more articles for the Local Globe, in which I also did a podcast where I interviewed students, teachers, and organization leaders on their thoughts on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. They all had varying opinions, but they all agreed that through effective communication and by us taking action, there can be a much sustainable future and a greener world. At the Dear Asian Youth, I started to share stories about the climate crisis and how we all can spread awareness and start to do any activities for raising more awareness. Through partnering with these organizations, I started to under I started to become not only more passionate, but also become more interested in how people are going across borders and across the country to spread the word and to act within their own communities. This, this was all very inspirational, and this led me to become an activist in several other organizations as well. A well, a Vietnam is currently announced their plans during the COP26 summit, in which leaders announced that by 2045, they hope the economy can be 75% renewable. Hanoi even started its own electric bus program, and Saigon hopes to do so soon. There are many actions and many steps that you all can take. There have been many stores opening up right here in Saigon that sell eco-friendly uh, materials and resources, such as Kelu, Light A Refill, or Green Around the Corner. I strongly encourage you all to buy more eco-friendly materials so that you all can live a much more sustainable life. With all these steps and actions, the hope is for the all of you and for many other people to start stepping up and to reach out to more people to not only spread awareness, but to start taking the actions that Vietnam can not only become more sustainable, but have a renewable lifestyle as well. This can all ensure that Vietnam reaches climate justice and sustainability in the near future. So now let's all step up and rise to help Vietnam and our communities as well. Thank you.